What up everyone, thanks for tuning into the channel and today I'm super excited. We're going to be going over a simple project that you can put on your resume if you're a Python beginner and this project revolves around APIs. If you've never heard about APIs before, don't worry, we're going to teach you everything you need to know and hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a project that is able to tell you the weather from anywhere in the world. Let's jump straight into it. So for those of you that don't know, API pretty much just stands for Application Programming Interface. And that's just a fancy way of saying it allows two different software components to communicate with each other. Now, an easy example of this is something like pulling hashtag data from Twitter. Let's say we wanted to know what was trending and what the latest tweets for hashtag Donald Trump was. Well, instead of going into Twitter and searching the search bar, we could actually use Twitter's API and use one of their get requests to get the recent tweets for Donald Trump. Now, when it comes to APIs, there are two types of requests. Get requests, like the one we just talked about, and post requests. Now, get requests focusing on pulling information, like getting hashtag data from Twitter, or pulling live weather data, which we're going to be doing in a second. And post requests revolves around pushing data to that API. So if you wanted to make a bot that could tweet, you can use Twitter's post API to actually push tweets to Twitter. And the same goes for posting Instagram pictures. Now, the API we're gonna be using for this tutorial is one that comes from openweathermap.org. So openweathermap.org is a website that allows you to see the weather in any part of the world. So we can navigate over here to the API section and we wanna click on current weather data and click subscribe. Now, as you can see here, they have different packages depending on how often you want to consume their API. We're gonna click get API key and start for the free tier package. Now, it's gonna lead you to a page where you can sign up. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make a new account. So once you've created an account, it'll bring you to this page where it wants to know your company and purpose. For company, you can just put test and for purpose, for the sake of the video, I'll just put something like education. Now, once you've saved that, you can see that there's a nice little dashboard you have access to. Where we wanna go is API keys. Now, once you click on API keys, you'll see over here that you have an API key. And what that does is it's pretty much your password that authenticates you to access their API. So without an API key for most established APIs, you're not actually gonna be able to access it. Now this key is something you wanna keep private, you don't want anyone to know. Obviously my key is on screen, but this is just for the video and I'm probably gonna delete this key as soon as I finish the video. So you're gonna to wanna to keep this API key in a safe place, have it open and uh, be ready to use it for the next steps. So now that we've gotten our API key, it's time to actually call the API. So to do so, we need three things. Number one, the URL of the API we're calling. Number two, our query. And number three, our API key. Now, in this case, we can go to openweathermap.org's API and see that the URL for getting the current weather is as such, api.openweathermap.org slash data slash 2.5 slash weather. Now, it's good to note that this is gonna be different depending on the API that you call. Now, the query in our case is the city. So let's say we wanna get the weather for Toronto and our API key we got in the last step. Now, the way it works is you concatenate the URL with the parameters you're providing, in this case, the city and our API key, in a very specific way. To denote that you're starting to put parameters, you put a question mark at the beginning. Now, each parameter will then have the name of the parameter, an equal sign, and then the value of that parameter, followed by an and sign to denote that you are adding another parameter. So in this case, Q is just the city that we're querying for. So Q equals Toronto. Now to enter the next um, parameter, which is our API key, we put an and sign. And in this case, the API key is called app ID for their API. So we put and app ID is equal to our app ID. Now it's pretty cool, you can actually paste this in your browser, just like I did over here, and you will actually get a proper response. So we can see here that it looks a bit jumbled up. This is actually in a form called JSON, which is a JavaScript ob object notation. Now we're going to talk about how to parse through all this information in a second, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what it'll look like when you have a successful request. 
So let's try putting this into code. As you can see here, I've made a simple Python file and all I've done so far is just made the URL, the variables. So for example, the API endpoint is just equal to this string, as we discussed earlier. City is Toronto and here's my API key. So the next thing we want to do here is pretty much concatenate all these things together into one big URL like I showed you before. So there's a lot of different libraries you can use to do this but I figured I would do this manually just so you get a better idea of how it actually works. So we can see here I've just simply constructed um, a quick string that just concatenates every single one of them together with the uh, respective notation that I showed you before. Now if we were to print this URL by actually running this code, we could see at the bottom here this is the URL we've gotten, which is the same URL that worked before. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually make the request. So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to import a library that comes with Python called URL lib. And after that, we are going to make a URL open call. Now, URL lib .url open is pretty much just saying make a request and store it in this variable called response. Now, if we were to actually run this code um, and print out our response, what we would actually see is we just get this weird object looking thing. So what we have to do is actually use a JSON library to parse the data so that it's actually readable. So what we can do is on the top, we can go ahead and import JSON and we can actually use this cool function called json.loads um, to parse the response. So what it'll do is Pretty much we pass in our response and we add dot read to the end of it and it will load it into um, the JSON library which will parse it as a JSON response. Now if we print the parsed response, what we'll end up with is this long JSON string as we can see here um, that has a bunch of the data we're interested in. So what I've actually done here is I've taken all the JSON code and I put it into a code beautifier just so it's a bit easier to read. As we can see here, everything's very structured and if we look at the category like weather, we can see that the description is light rain. If we scroll a bit down, we can see under main, we can find the temperature, the air pressure, the humidity and the minimum and maximum temperature of the day. So we can use this to tell which information we're looking for and how to get to it in our Python code. For this specific case, we're interested in the description as well as the temperature. So if you're not used to JSON, this next part might be a bit tricky, but pretty much what we're going to want to do is get and extract the information we need from this JSON object. So for the temperature, this is how it would look like. We would enter the main category and then get the temperature value. And for the weather, it would look like this. We would enter the weather category, get the first value in the weather category and get the description. Um, if you remember from the last diagram. Now we can just verify that we're doing this right by simply printing out the weather and the temperature and as we can see down here it's 278 degrees Fahrenheit and light rain in Toronto. So this is the bread and butter of this project and pretty much you could stop here if you wanted to. Now some cool things to do on top of this could be um, maybe editing your code so that you actually take in the city you want to get the weather from. So say for example, um, if I add raw input here for city, I can now type in something like um, New York. And as we can see in New York, it's 283 degrees Fahrenheit and it's a bit misty. So there you have it guys, some simple Python code using APIs that you can build into something cool or just put on your resume. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'm gonna attach the code in a GitHub link in the description. So if you want the code, just hit up the GitHub link and uh, check it out. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. I'll see you guys tomorrow.